Now, let us learn about the process of respiration in plants. As you already know, in most of the plants, the exchange of gases takes place at stomata present in leaf. Apart from stomata, there are other areas on the plant body through which gaseous exchange takes place, like surface of roots, lenticels on stem, etc. Some plants, such as mangrove, have specialized structures like breathing roots, and some plants, like orchards, have tissues that produces oxygen is also required by plants to produce energy and expel carbon dioxide. Let us learn the conduction within the plant. Inside the plant, there exists openings which leads to a series of spaces between the cells. These spaces are formed all over the plant. The spaces are very large in leaves and smaller in other parts of the plant. The air spaces are covered with water. The oxygen present in the air spaces dissolves in water and passes through the porous cell walls into the cytoplasm where the sugar is broken down into carbon dioxide and water with the liberation of the energy. In the similar way, carbon dioxide also passes out into the air spaces. The whole system works by the process of diffusion, that is as the oxygen is utilized by the cells, a gradient develops between the cells and the air in the spaces, and similarly between the air and the spaces and the air outside the stomata and lenticels, so oxygen passes in. In the same way, as more carbon dioxide is expelled, by the cells, a gradient develops in the reverse direction and it passes out. Let us learn how different plants absorb oxygen through their roots. Most of the plants can aerate, supply air, their roots by taking in the oxygen from the lenticels or through the surface of their root hairs, as their walls are very thin. This oxygen at lenticels or surface of root hairs is obtained from the air spaces between the soil particles. Plants having their roots in wet places like ponds or marshes cannot do this. They are adapted to these waterlogged conditions by having much larger air spaces which connect the stems with the roots, making diffusion from the upper parts much more efficient. The most usual adaptation is to have a hollow stem. Next time, cut the stems of some of the plants near pond or marsh and see how many are hollow when compared to a similar number of species of plants growing in normal soil. It is observed that the problem of air transport is more difficult for trees and many plants cannot survive with their roots permanently in water. But the mangrove tree of the tropics is exempted because it sends aerial roots above the surface and takes in oxygen in that manner.